My name is Safia Umoja Noble. I'm an assistant professor at UCLA in the Department of Information Studies. I'm also affiliated with the Department of African American Studies, Gender Studies, and Education. My work is mostly concerned with um, the political economy of the internet and the ways in which um, that's both a racialized and gendered project. So I'm interested in not just kind of the, the class dimensions or the economic dimensions of exploitation that are happening, both in terms of representations on the internet, but more importantly, in kind of the more material aspects of the internet. And that goes from the ways in which um, racialized and gendered bodies are commodified, sold, packaged, um, repurposed, uh, mostly out of our own control. Um, but I'm also interested in things like um, who builds the internet infrastructures, who's exploited, like the kinds of kind of diasporic black labor connections that we have to each other, whether it's the bypassing of black labor in the U.S. to participate in digital economies, Silicon Valley, tech companies, tech corridors around the country, or whether it's um, black labor in the Congo that's mining Colton for microprocess uh, microprocessing chips. Um, we have so much in common diasporically and studying the political economy of the internet from a black feminist and kind of critical race perspective allows us to make these linkages and that's what I'm interested in. Black suffering is super profitable on the internet, whether it's um, the way you see black people maligned in the comments section of any big open web project um, like YouTube comments, for example, or the circulation of um, the kinds of um, images of police brutality, black death, um, black dying, black brutalization. Um, we see that highly trafficked by big news organizations and internet companies because people will click on it. They're titillated by it, they're interested in it, they may even be um, in solidarity with it and grieving through it, but every time people click on those images of black death and black brutality, um, big internet companies and media companies make a lot of money. And so these are the kinds of things that I'm also trying to talk about. Um, there's the economic cost of um, how black death is, is uh, circulated and made profitable, but there's the emotional and psychological trauma cost that we also pay. So when you see these kinds of um, videos circulating, in fact, I think about when Trayvon um, was murdered by George Zimmerman, how almost all the black mothers like myself that I knew, um, we couldn't get out of bed. We were paralyzed, black parents were paralyzed because these images were um, just trafficked over and over and over. And um, so I'm interested in also kind of the public health consequences of this kind of virality and who really pays the cost and who's, who um, is made um, less empathic toward our lives too. I mean, we know that racism is a public health crisis and finally people in public health researchers are starting to talk about racism as a public health crisis, right? So we know that not only do um, African Americans or black people have lower life expectancy, for example, because of racism, what we also know is that um, the consumption of negative media images ha takes its toll on people. So I'm starting to think about um, how could we uh, study more um, routinely what these kinds of circulations do to the psyche and the kind of emotional um, stability of black communities, right? Many, many people are just paralyzed in fact, by seeing these videos circulate. Um, and that kind of debilitation really undermines our ability to seek justice and um, speak truth to power. I just think taking up these issues of, um, of the trafficking of these images of our most um, degraded moments, um, and you know, that, that's not just police brutality and black death. I mean, I think about this. I have a graduate student I'm working with, Tiara Tanksley, who's doing her dissertation on um, images of black women in reality television, right? And the psychological and emotional toll that takes on black girls and women's academic 
performance. So there's so much at play in terms of the potency of um, black media representations. This has been studied for you know, 50 years already in the context of television and radio. But I think we need to turn our attention rather than focusing so much on the liberatory possibilities, right? These kind of techno-deterministic ideas of the power of the internet um, and, and maybe consider that we're being hyper-exploited, um, hyper-commercialized in our um, debasement and in our oppression. And I'm interested in being a part of that kind of research. There's no shortage of people who think the internet is a liberatory tool, for sure, um, especially young activists. But um, the internet is a lot of different things. And one of the things that I'm most concerned about uh, is seeing young activists, young black college students, people in Black Lives Matter movement, a variety of organizations, um, using the most central surveillance tools of the US government to organize within. Right, so platforms like Facebook, which is you know funded by the CIA, Twitter, um, Instagram. The CIA is actively through its venture capital organization InQtel, um, incubating um, tech companies that can do wholesale data mining of these platforms to build intense profiles on people who are trying to make change in our society in very positive ways. And um, those will be things that um, activists can never, you know, you can't Freedom of Information Act um, what the NSA or the CIA has collected on you or the profile it's built on you through third party corporate platforms, okay? Because those aren't protected. It's not government information. Many of these companies are working as these kind of extrajudicial government arms. And um, there's great, some very good emergent um, investigative journalism around this. Well, people have to be aware of um, where they're locating and situating um, movement organizing. And um, you know, to, to imagine that we would place all the, the strategy and thinking, um, it, it, it's slightly absurd to me, but I understand why it's happening because there's such a low level, level of surveillance literacy, I'd call it, in our society right now. I mix what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like.